Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into another lesson here in Section 3 of Chapter 10 in Modern Math, or Discrete Math, and talk about exponential growth, okay, and geometric sequences, okay? And uh, so the idea is this. It's based upon the idea of what's called a constant rate of growth. Okay, a constant rate of growth. In each transition, the population where it changes by a fixed factor, okay? Fixed factor meaning that there is a constant in the multiplication process in any geometric sequence. And a geometric sequence, well, that's just a sequence defined by repeated multiplication by that fixed constant, okay, or fixed factor, a constant called the uh, common ratio. So some of this you already know, okay. We went over in chapter nine. We talked a little bit about geometric sequences, and that fixed constant called the common ratio, R can be found, if you recall, by taking the second term. Well, let me, let me write out the sequence first. So suppose we have a sequence starting at piece of 0, piece of 1, piece of 2, piece of 3, etc. You take the second term, which is piece of 1, divided by the previous term, piece of 0. That's how, that's how all geometric sequences work. I mean, if you take, if you take piece of 0 times r, all right, to get piece of 1, well, that means you take piece of 1 divided by piece of 0 to get r, okay? So if you multiply, you go forward, you divide to get backwards, okay? In general, you take any the nth population divided by the previous one, which is piece of n minus 1. Remember, that's called the previous population. All right, so that means I could take piece of 3 divided by piece of 2 to get the common ratio, or piece of 2 divided by piece of 1, or piece of 5 divided by piece of 4. You just got to take any two consecutive terms and divide by the previous one, and you can get the common ratio. It's actually fairly simple. So in the following geometric sequences, we can calculate the common ratio R by using this little simple technique. So let's get the, uh, b the first basic skill down, that meaning the common ratio R. Let me put in red right up here. So R is equal to P sub 1 divided by P sub 0. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me uh, let me write it down here. So r is equal to p sub one divided by p sub zero. There we go. Where twelve is p sub zero, your first term, second term p sub one, and then p sub two, p sub three, and so on. You just take p sub one, forty-eight divided by twelve. That's all you do. So forty-eight divided by twelve. Well, that's simply four. That means that you take twelve times four to get to forty-eight times 4 to get to 192, times 4 to get 768. That's easily seen. You can take your calculator here, which I'm booting up right now. Get your calculator out because you're going to need it. Um, and you can start with the first number and use your common ratio to generate the whole population sequence. So if you take 12 times 4, notice you get 48. Times 4, you get uh, 192. And then times 4, 768. Times 4, 3072 and so on. So in these exercises here we just want to figure out how to get the common ratio because that's your first basic skill out of all the exponential growth problems. So let's get some experience. So here I got p sub 0 is 4, p sub 1 is 6, so r has got to be 6 divided by 4 or 3 halves. 1 and 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. Pretty simple. Here, p sub 0 is 6 and p sub 1 is 2, so r is going to be 2 divided by 6, or 2 6, or 1 third. If you divide that, you get 0 0.3 repeating. Come on. So I'm going to clear that out. 2 divided by 6. 2 divided by 6. Come on. Just keep up with me, calculator. Notice it's 0 0.3 repeating. Uh, when it comes to decimals, don't worry about it because you got the calculator, right? So just take your second term, which is 36.8, divided by the third term, excuse me, first term. So you take 36.8 divided by 16, and you get 2.3. It's pretty straightforward. When it comes to fractions, though, I would suggest that you don't use a calculator on either one of these because it's not going to give you the exact result. You can get the approximate result as a decimal, but you're not going to get the uh, result as a, an exact fraction. So don't use a calculator here. So we're going to do the same method, though. So r is equal to your second term, which is 22 21st, divided by your 2 thirds. That's what r is equal to. 
Okay, but how do you handle this? I mean, you got to go back to basics, right? When you divide two fractions, what you do is you multiply by the reciprocal. So you have to know what the reciprocal is, and you have to know how to multiply by the reciprocal. So here we go, 22 21st divided by 2 thirds is the same as multiplying 22 21st times the reciprocal of this, the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 3 halves. Okay? So you have to always multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and then cross-cancel and simplify. 2 into 22 is 11. Uh, let me see, 3 and 21, they're both divisible by 3. And so r is equal to 1 times 11, 11. 7 times 1, 7, or 11 sevenths. Okay, you can't get that with a calculator. You get an approximation as a decimal, but uh, not on the calculator, not exact. All right, so now you try it. Go ahead and pause the video. Take 2 sevenths divided by 10 21st and see what you get. Pause and play through the lesson here. Okay, so let's check your work. We're going to take 2 sevenths divided by 10 21st. That's 2 sevenths times the reciprocal 21 tenths. Okay, again, you reciprocate. Okay, and then you simplify. So 7 into 21 is 3. 2, two tenths is actually 1 fifths. So I can already see my answer. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 5 is 5. So my answer is 3 fifths. Okay, the rest are pretty straightforward. So go ahead and pause the video and try G, H, and I. And then when you're ready, press play and then check all your work. Okay, let's check your work. We got R is equal to 97.2 divided by 108. That's going to be 0 0.9 or 9 tenths. On the second one here, 756 divided by 2700. That's uh, 0 0.28. And then here, r is equal to 383.6 divided by 28, and that's equal to 13.7. Okay, so here's your basic skill. You, you take your second term divided by the first. Remember that. It's always the second term divided by the first. Second term divided by the first. Second term divided by the first. All right, r in general is equal to p sub 1 divided by the previous one, p sub 0. Okay? That's your first basic skill. Now let's apply it, and let's learn how to uh, generate the recursive formula, the explicit formula, and and work with this common ratio. But before we do, let's go ahead and review something here. The common ratio, by definition here, is the actual value of multiplication used in each transition that is determined by the growth rate, but not equal to the growth rate. Which means if there is a, let's say I'm just making to make up some numbers here, a 10% increase, Okay, then your growth rate, growth, let me write this down, growth rate, let's say R, okay, it's called R in general, is equal to 10% on top of the 100, or 100 plus that 10%, because it's an increase, right? So that's obviously 110%, and as a decimal, that's 1.1. You should remember this, because in prior lessons, when I talked about financial growth or the growth of money, we talked about the growth rate extensively, and if it was an increase, it's always above 100. If it was a decrease, let's say there's a 40%, let's say, decrease, okay? That means the growth rate is 100% minus the 40%. So R, or the growth rate, is actually 60% or 0.6. So it's, it's determined by the rate of growth, but not equal to the rate of growth. That's why this crazy vocabulary is what it means right here. So if there's a 10% increase, then the growth rate is 1.1 because we're on top of 100 here. We're above 100. If there's a decrease of 40%, you subtract it from 100 and you get your growth rate. Okay? Now, in any geometric sequence, okay, the recursive formula, P sub n, is always the goal, uh, common ratio, R, times the previous term. And the previous term is p sub n minus 1. When I say previous term, I'm talking about previous population. So this formula works great if you know the previous term or the previous population. But if you don't, you can't really use it. 
is determined by the previous uh, population. Most times, though, if you're trying to find the 50th population or the 100th population, you don't know the one before it, so you need an explicit formula. And believe it or not, you know that too. In explicitly any geometric sequence, this is geometric sequence, okay, P sub n, is given by uh, R, excuse me, not R, P sub 0, your initial population, all right, times R to the nth power. You saw this ex used extensively when we talked about financial math, when we predicted, you know, how much money we have in the future, like in 50 years, given a certain interest rate. Okay, where P sub 0 is your initial uh, amount, call it either the uh, principal, if it was financial terms, or the starting amount. R is your growth rate. And N is in the number of transitions or time periods. Number of time periods or transitions. Okay, so we're going to use this formula here to solve uh, our problems where we're asked to find, let's say, the 50th term, 20th term, or the thousands term, you know, whatever, you know, some kind of term in the future. So let's get some practice in these examples here and let's find. Um, the explicit function, the recursive function, and also the next term in the sequence uh, where are these population sequences begins with the seed or p sub 0. Note that right there. So this is p sub 0 is 3, p sub 1 is 6, p sub 2, this is p sub 3, and this is p sub 4, and the unknown, that's p sub 5. Okay, I don't know what that is yet. Okay, we got to figure that out. All right, so the very first thing you do on anything is you got to find your growth rate. What is the common ratio? So you take, you find R by taking the second term divided by the first, always. So 6 divided by 3 is always 2, All right? It's 2, obviously. 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 2 is 48, times 2 is 96. So I can find the next term by taking the previous term times the common ratio. That's using the explicit formula. Take the previous term and multiply it by the common ratio. That's easy, but I mean, what's the 10th term without listing? What's the 20th term? What's the 50th term? Because I'm not going to list them all. That requires the explicit formula. So uh, first, though, the uh, let's go recursive first. So recursively, uh, your, your function looks like p sub n is equal to r times the previous term, p sub n minus 1. The explicit function is p sub n is equal to uh, the initial term, in this case it's 3, times r to the nth power. So for us it's 3 times 2 to the nth power. Let me write this right here so I can have it in my sites or that you can have it in your sites. There we go, there's your explicit function. Okay, so we're going to use this to find p sub 5 and then other things. So let's verify that it's 96. Let's see. Let's, let me show you that this works. So, excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So p sub 5. So p sub 5 is equal to 3 times 2 to the 5th power. Now, what's 2 to the 5th? So 2 to the 5th, that should be 32. All right, so that's 3 times 32. So times 3. 96. So this is 3 times 32 is 96. And you could tell that it's the same, see? So it makes sense. This function's working and it generates the right numbers. So if we wanted to, just for kicks, to find p sub 10 to be easy, it'd be 3 times 2 to the 10th. The question is, you know, what is that? So let's figure that out too. So 3 times 2 to the 10th power. On these sophisticated calculators, you can type it in directly, like I did. Or you can go 2 to the 10th and get 1,024, then times 3, and you'll still get 3,072. Okay? So that's how you get any term or any population that you want, no matter how many transitions have passed. You just got to find the common ratio first. Use your explicit function right here, all right, and right here to figure out uh, whatever population you're looking for. So on this next one here, uh, 
P sub 0 is 20. P sub 1 is 24. So the ratio, the common ratio is 24 divided by 20. So you take 24 divided by 20, and you get 1.2. And then you're going to write the recursive function next. That's always p sub n times, or is equal to r, which is 1.2, times the previous one. The explicit function, p sub n, using this formula right above here, is your c, 20, times r, 1.2, to the nth power. There's your special function that you need right here. And let me see, this is p sub 2, this is p sub 3. This is a piece of 4. So we got to find a piece of 4. So that's 20 times 1.2 to the 4th. So 20 times 1.2. Notice the use of parentheses here, raised to the 4th power. And I get 41.472. Now this is a video, right? And because it's a video, guys, if I go too fast, uh, then go ahead and pause me and rewind it and listen to it again, okay? So use your video to your advantage, all right? And uh, use it effectively. Get good. All right, pause the video. You try the next one. Find R, find the recursive, find the explicit, and then after that, find piece of four. Okay, you don't know what that is, so find piece of four. Pause the video, please. Okay, now let's check your work. Okay, so we're going to take 300 divided by 400, and we get 3 fourths. As a decimal, that's 0.75. Okay, recursively, p sub n is equal to your ratio, 0.75, times the previous term, p sub n minus 1. The explicit function is equal to your seed, which is 400, times 0.75 to the nth power. I don't know if you can hear this right now, but I got the band playing in the background. It's like I got theatrics going on. This is cool. Okay, and we got this explicit function. It's used to find the fourth term. So we're going to plug in 4, so 400 times 0.75 to the fourth. Whoa, going crazy. It's worth it. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to take 400, use parentheses, times 0.75. Raise it to the fourth power. Powerful calculator. I mean, it generates the numbers for you. 126.5625. All right, and there it is. That's your fourth population, or your population. Uh, excuse me, not your fourth population. Yeah, this is fourth population after four transitions, okay? And that is how it's done. The only thing you need to do now is you need to learn how to apply it with some word problems, right? I mean, because that's why we learn the mathematics is to apply it. So keep in mind that we use this explicit function. So I'm going to put it up here again. Okay, so we can have it on our sites. This is our main tool right here. Okay, so let's read the problem. So a mom offers to double her allowance every month. So double her allowance every month for the rest of the year. Keyword double right here. That's your common ratio. That's R. I can already tell that R is 2 because of the doubling. Okay. Uh, now, she's going to do that every month for the rest of the year. The daughter currently has $5 a monthly allowance. So in terms of the population sequence, we start off with $5. That's your first month. Okay. Your first month here. In the second month, we got to double that. So 10 bucks. This represents your second month. I'm listing out the population sequence because it helps you understanding how you evaluate the explicit function. So this is an important step right here. Uh, you keep So 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20. This is your third month. 40. So again, times 2 times 2, right? So double, so times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the in the... Let me see, this is the fourth month. In the fifth month, we have 80 bucks. The question is, dot, 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 what is it in the 12th month? Okay, what is that? Question mark. 
All right, I'm not going to list it. When you can, you can list it. This is a simple problem. You can do this multiple times and figure out the 12 month. However, uh, let's get uh, mathematical here and let's do it the smart way, right? Our explicit function is simple. It's p sub n is equal to our our seed. You're right here. It's five bucks. We start off with five bucks times the common ratio raised to the nth power. We can use that function to determine how much money the daughter will have in the last month. That's the twelfth month. Okay, what would that be? Okay, we got to figure that out. The question is, what is it? So is that piece of 11 or piece of 12? And that's the trick in this problem, not the how to use the function. It's like, what do you evaluate at? Do you evaluate it at n equals 11 or n equals 12? So notice something here. P sub 0 stands for the first month. P sub 1 stands for the second month. P sub 2 stands for the third month. P sub 3 stands for the fourth month. P sub 4 stands for the fifth month because we start counting at 0. So this right here should be P sub 11. It's always 1 less than the the uh, the number of the month in this case. So here I need to find P sub 11. That's 5 times 2 to the 11th power. And this is surprisingly big. 5 times 2 to the 11th. Okay, it's 10,240 bucks. All right, in the 12 month. All right, why? Because she, the the question asked in the last last month of the year. Surprisingly big. Okay. Uh, and that's example one. Example two. All right, suppose you have $1,000 uh, you deposit into an account. It pays an interest rate of 10%. Well, the common ratio, R, is 100% plus the 10, or 110%. So R has to be 1.1. The initial deposit is 1,000, so the sequence better look like this: 1,000 bucks, and then you got to multiply it by 1.1. So clear the calculator, enter in 1,000, multiply it by 1.1. Pause the video and do this, by the way, and so catch up with me. So after one year, you have 1,100 bucks, and then you got to multiply that by 1.1 for the end of year two. So in this case, so I'm going to go times 1.1. So at the end of year two, I have $1,210. Once you do this twice on the TID4, all you do is just hit the enter button, and you can get as many values as you want. Okay, so end of the first year and the second year, end of the third year is 1331. Okay, so let's talk about this. So. Let me highlight something. So we start here. This is P sub 0, and this is the your initial deposit. So at the end of year 1, this is the end of year 1, or at the end of the first year. So year, nah, let's call it first year. So first year, you have $1,100. $1,210 represents at the end of the second year how much you'd have. This represents right here at the end of third year. So here this directly corresponds here. Here you start off with a thousand dollars. After one year you have eleven hundred which represents your piece of one. At the end of year two it's piece of two you have twelve hundred ten dollars. At the end of year three you have piece of three or thirteen hundred and thirty one dollars. So after twenty five years that's going to be piece of twenty five after twenty five years we need to find piece of twenty five. So I need 25, uh, substitute 25 in my explicit function, which I need to write. So P sub n here is going to be equal to your uh, your seed. So it's a $1,000 deposit times your growth rate to the nth power. I need to use that to figure out how much I'll have in 25 years. This is how we did it in the financial math that we did in our prior lessons. So we're going to take $1,000, raise it to, or multiply it by 1.1 to the 25th power. So here we go. Enter in $1,000, times it by your growth rate, and raise it to the 25th power. So you get $10,834. And how many cents? Uh, 71 cents. 
Okay, so after one year, it's a piece of one. After two years, it's a piece of two. After three years, it's a piece of three. After 25 years, it's a piece of 25. These correspond to one another. A little bit different than the previous problem, okay? That's why you have to list out the sequence. This step right here cannot be overstated. This is an important step, listing out the sequence, because it helps you figure out how to use your objective function and what value of n you substitute in, okay? To help you figure out what you want to look for in the future. Okay, now I want you to pause and play the video here. I want you to pause it here, work these three out, and then press play when you're ready and check your work. Pause the video. Okay, so let's check your work. Let me write down the function as p sub n is equal to p sub 0 times r to the nth. So I got to write my objective function, excuse me, my explicit function. So p sub n equals. Uh, 8 times 1.7 to the nth power. I need to find p sub 16 right there. So p sub 16 is equal to 8 times 1.7 to the 16th power. Dun, dun, okay, you can <laughs> hear the music in the background. So 8 times 1.7. And let's raise it to the 16th power and let's see what happens. Okay, a little Christmas stuff in the background, by the way. So 38,928. All right, 0.9535. Okay, number two. You got your seed here. You got your second term here, piece of one. So R is equal to 900 divided by 1,000, which is 9 tenths or 0.9. Uh, your explicit function looks like a uh, thousand times 0 0.9 to the nth power. So p sub 11 should be equal to a uh, thousand times 0 0.9 raised to the 11th power. So what is that? Don't know. So let's figure it out. So a thousand, make sure you put in only three zeros there, uh, times 0 0.9 raised to the 11th power. So 313.81, roughly. Okay, that's P sub 11. Okay, number three. The initial population is 20,000. 20% increase. So my growth rate is 120% or 1.2. Uh, what is the fifth generation right here? So that is P sub 5. So P sub n is equal to, in general, it's 20,000 in this case, times my growth rate to the nth power. There is my explicit function. Okay, so P sub 5 should be equal to 20,000 times 1.2 to the fifth power. And if you work that out, you get 49,766.4, okay? And that's how it's done, my friends. The only thing you need to do is get good, and you're going to do that by doing some practice. So let's turn right here. This is your homework here, page 33. All right, so work this and uh, check with my answers when I see you, or I'll send them out, uh, either online or remind. And then uh, in my next lesson, we'll get into geometric sums. Okay, now remember, this is a video, right? And I sometimes go a little bit too fast. So if you need to, you can rewind and you can listen to any portion you want. All right, use the video and the technology to your advantage. I've never had it before when I was a kid because the internet did not exist. So um, this is Mr. Ainsworth. Uh, this is another lesson. I'll, be, I'll see you in my next one, my last one in Chapter 10. Uh, I'm out of here. Good night.